This is an explanation of how to use the Tektronix 2024 oscilloscope here in the circuits lab. To begin, turn the oscilloscope on by pressing the power button here. As you can see, we now have the startup screen for the oscilloscope. While it's showing the screen, it's doing a self-test and internal calibration. But we can do other setup while it's doing that. This is the oscilloscope probe. It consists of an actual probe tip here and a ground lead here. We can connect this to the calibration output of the oscilloscope. The ground lead goes to the upper clip here, and the probe to the lower one here. This calibration output is a 5-volt square wave. Now, when the oscilloscope starts up, it will be in whatever settings the previous person left it in, which is probably not what you want. Once it's finished setting up, we will press the default setup button here to restore it to the factory default settings. These are probably also not what you want, but they're better than whatever the last person left it in. The hourglass there will finish once it is done with cal calibration. Power on, self-test passed, push menu off to proceed. Now this will disappear after a moment, and we press default setup. Now, we probably want uh, a suitable setup for what the calibration signal is, because it's a similar signal to what we'll be working with. So we press here this black button, auto set. It now looks at the signal and figures out what a good setup is to view that signal. Now we can clearly see that it is a square wave. Each channel of the oscilloscope has a specific color associated with it. Channel 1 is yellow, channel 2 is blue, channel 3 pink, and channel 4 green. Each probe has a little indicator on it to show you which channel it is. For example, here is the channel 2 probe with a blue indicator. To adjust the settings for a specific channel, push the button colored for that channel. So I will now be adjusting the settings for channel 1. Now this brings up a menu of several different settings. The first setting is coupling with three options, DC, AC, and ground. The DC coupling measures the actual voltage of the signal relative to ground. So this is a square wave signal, which we can see going from this marker here, which is ground, to some voltage. If we change to AC coupling by pressing this button, it now throws away the DC component of the signal, and the signal goes equally on either side of ground. The last coupling option is ground, which will just show us that reference line. We can adjust where ground is on the screen by rotating this upper knob. We can lower it and raise it back up. Let's go back to DC coupling. Now we can see that this has, we can see that the signal itself will move when we do this adjustment as well. The next option is invert, which will simply flip the signal. We won't be using that much. The bandwidth and label options similarly aren't very important for this class. Probe setup, however, this button is very important. It currently shows 10x, and the probe itself has a little slide switch on it, which can be set between 1x and 10x. It's very important that the probe setting match the oscilloscope setting. For example, this probe is currently set to 10x, and the oscilloscope thinks so too. If we bring up the menu by pressing this button and have the oscilloscope set to 1x, it now has a wrong idea of what the signal is. We have to set it to 10x for it to understand the signal properly. Always check this before making any measurements. Now, we might also want to know, besides where ground is, where this other voltage is. What is the total voltage swing of the signal? To look at this, we look at the voltage written here, right above coupling. It says 2 volts. That means 2 volts per division, and you can just see the thin gray dotted lines here on the oscilloscope, each spacing there is a division. We see the signal is currently going about two and a half divisions, so at two volts per division, it is a five volt signal. We can adjust the size of the division with this lower, larger knob. For example, I change it here, it is now five volts per division, and we can see that the signal only goes up by one division. We can also move it in the other direction to one volt per division, at which point the signal goes off screen. You might want, when you have an off-screen signal, to reduce the number, to reduce the 
or rather increase the number of volts per division, uh, reducing the size of the signal so that you can see all of it and know the overall range. We don't always want this menu open, so we can close it by pressing the menu off button here. Now, the voltage per division is still displayed here. The next number that's displayed is the amount of time per division, currently 400 microseconds. This is per horizontal division rather than per vertical division. Since this number will be the same for all channels, unlike possibly the voltage per division, we adjust it with a single knob here. Turning it this way reduces the amount of time per division, lengthening the apparent waveform. We could turn it the other way to increase the amount of time per division, shrinking the apparent waveform. We can now see that we have one cycle of this wave every one division, and that one division is one millisecond, so this is a one kilohertz square wave. The scope will also do this calculation for you and report here as 1.02 kilohertz. The calibration on these scopes is slightly off. You can get a lot of measurements just by looking visually at the screen here, but it's nice to also have the scope report them numerically. To add measurements besides the default ones at the bottom, we can press the measure button here. This brings up another menu. We can press the first button here to add a new measurement. We then can scroll between the options for different types of measurements using this knob, which can be very touchy. Let's scroll down to find, for example, amplitude, which is the, the voltage of the signal. We then press add measurement here to add it. Other things of interest include period, which is the inverse of frequency. We can now close these menus again with the menu off button. We have to press it once for each menu we want to close. We can now see here that the period is reported as about 980 microseconds and the amplitude as 4.88 volts. If the scope were perfectly calibrated, this would be 1 millisecond and 5 volts, but these have not been maintained in about 15 years. Now we want to hook up a second channel, the blue channel. We hook this up to the calibration input as well. You can just fit two channels on here if you're careful. And then we want to turn this channel on by pressing the appropriate numbered button. If we wanted to turn the channel off, we could push this button again while its menu is visible. Looking at the screen, we see a bit of a problem. Rather than a nice clean square wave like the yellow channel, we have these rounded corners. That means the probe is not properly compensated. To adjust it, there is a variable capacitor at the base of the probe cable here, which we can adjust using a very small screwdriver. If we turn it one direction, it causes an overshoot, and in the other direction, it causes these rounded corners. We have to get it just right to get a clean square wave. Now the blue probe is also properly compensated. Let's look at a real signal now, rather than just calibration square waves. So first thing is that we're connected. Okay. We're going to connect channel 1 to a microphone amplifier board, which will output a signal based on the sound level in the room. We need to connect up both the ground connection and the probe lead because voltage is always a difference between two points. The microphone amplifier board here has the microphone in silver, the amplifier chip in black, and some connections on this screw terminal. We have power, 5 volts red, and ground in black. It is very important to always use this convention for power and ground so that you don't accidentally connect the wrong things. We then have the output signal here in purple, and everything is connected to these header pins, which have alligator clips to the power supply. We're now going to connect our probe. We connect the ground lead to the ground, and the probe lead here to the center pin, which is the signal. This is a kind of difficult connection to make. Now it's connected, and we can see on the screen the output of the microphone. Now we can see a output signal here on the yellow channel. However, the blue channel is now just a distraction, so we hide that. So, a few things we can see about the signal. It is still in the range 0 to 5 volts always. 
that's because this amplifier has a 0 to 5 volt supply and doesn't output a signal outside of that range. We can also notice that occasionally the signal is pausing and only triggering when I speak or if I tap on the table. This is because the oscilloscope is triggering based off the signal, and we can see here that it's triggering off of a rising edge at 2.48 volts. This means that it will only draw a trace on the screen when it sees the signal go from below 2.48 volts to above 2.48 volts. We can adjust this using the trigger menu button, which brings up another menu. This shows a few options. This is an edge trigger, which means it is based on the signal going from either below a point to above a point, or from above a point to below a point. It is triggering off of channel 1, and it is DC coupled. Note that this coupling is actually separate from the one for the channel that display itself. We can see here that the slope is rising edge, going from a low voltage to a high voltage, rather than a falling edge from high to low, and that it is at 2.48 volt. Another option is the mode of the triggering, which we can adjust with this button. There are two main options, auto and normal. We're currently in auto mode, which will keep triggering several times after the initial trigger. We can change to normal mode, which will only trigger once for each time we see the trigger. This is more useful to, for capturing rare events, whereas auto is useful for capturing things that you don't know the exact trigger for. Let's close that menu and look at the level option. As if we adjust the level at which it detects a slope by pressing here and rotating this knob, we can now see a line on the screen for what level the signal has to cross before it will trigger. If we set it very high, the signal will basically never get there, even if, uh, so it will never trigger. If we set it a bit lower, we can occasionally get a trigger, but it's infrequent. Setting it closer to the midpoint of the signal, and even a little bit of noise is enough to trigger it, so we get practically a continuous signal.